I have spent 30 years with the opportunity, having, uh, not work, but having more fun every day, maximizing the platform of the Dallas Cowboys. Somebody looks the other way, I said, whoa, whoa, come on back over here and look at the Cowboys. And when it got a little dull, I tried to liven it up a little bit from time to time. Oh, Jerry Jones livens it up all the time. And the Dallas Cowboys continue to be one of the marquee franchises in all of sports. It really is amazing when you think that for the most part over the past quarter century, the Cowboys have been slightly above average, just slightly, if that. And they still continue to have a following unlike any other team. Every network wants Cowboys games. Yeah. Everybody wants to talk about the Cowboys, the ultimate polarizing team. Imagine what it would be like if they actually were contenders every year. Chris, they have not been to an NFC championship since the last year they won the Super Bowl 25 years ago. But yet the Cowboys continue to be a team that sucks a lot of oxygen out of the room because everyone wants to know what's going on with them. They are number 12 on the preseason power rankings. Look, some people think that's a little bit low, but... It, it just fits with the recent formula for the Cowboys. Big talk, big talent, big expectations, and they don't deliver. And that's kind of where they fit right now. Even yeah. though I'm optimistic that with Mike McCarthy there as the head coach, I, I think they could be better. What's the best thing you think their new coach brings to the table? Yeah, I, well, McCarthy, I think just toughness. And, like, um, what do I want to say? You know, game plan that – you know, uh, that goes together, cohesiveness. You know, you've heard me say this issue before with the last regime there in Dallas. I felt like the offense just went out and went, hey, this is what we do. We're going to play offense. And the defense went, this is what we do. And we're not going to change anything. You know, I think McCarthy is going to have game plans that complement each other. That was the word I was looking for that will ultimately lead to putting the team in the best place to win the football game. So I think that, the attention to detail, McCarthy, the toughness, you know, and being a coach that's won a Super Bowl and been there and done that and, of course, made the, the Green Bay Packers very relevant for a long, long time, you know, I think that's what he's going to bring to that ta uh, the table there in Dallas more than anything. Yeah, I agree with you there. And sometimes you just need change for the sake of change. It was a long 10 years. And, you know, I think Jerry Jones took a lot of pride, maybe excessive pride, in discovering and grooming and believing in Jason Garrett. I remember after he finished his first contract with the team, Jerry Jones was intent on keeping him because basically said, hey, we've suffered through the growing pains for Jason Garrett as a head coach. Now we get to benefit from the fully – finalized product and the problem is it just never got them to where they want to be McCarthy has shown he can get to the top of the mountain he's shown he can get closer to the top of the mountain than the Cowboys have since 1995 what do you think the biggest change is Chris that he needs to make within that roster within that organization within that mindset to punch through to the next level that they've been striving to get to for 25 years. Well, I, I think it'll be about, you know, kind of what we just talked about still, like situational football, how to, you know, you know what we're going to do on a second and eight and what's the theme of our team to it's going to get us to a third and manageable or taking shots or whatever it may be. You know, to me, he's going to come up with themes in which they want to play and then go, wait, here's a strength of my team. Let's, you know, or, hey, Kellen Winslow let, or uh, Kellen Moore, let's get together and try to figure out more ways to utilize these strengths. Uh, I think that's what's interesting, you know, to me. And, and again, you know, you hit on it. You know, you said, yeah, 12 and some people think it's a little low. It, well, it's a top 10 roster in football. It is. I mean, there, there's no doubt about that. You know, you'll look at the roster in totality and you go, where is there really a weakness? You know, maybe you could point to corner right now, right? Opposite of Chidobe Awuze, you know, because they lost Byron Jones. But after that, damn. I mean, with the signing of Everson Griffin, that was the only area I looked at to go, ooh, do they have a guy that's a proven commodity? Are we really just going to rely on Alden Smith and Randy Ge Gregory and Dorrance Armstrong or a rookie? You know, so now they get Everson Griffin, too. With a new scheme under Mike Nolan, I just think it's going to be a totally new look Dallas Cowboys, let alone they have one of the most, I mean, as we sit here right now, it's one of the most dangerous offenses in football. I mean, it's dangerous. When you talk about those three receivers, you know, and 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 everything, like I heard Michael Irvin say last week, like Golden State, okay, maybe I don't want to go that far, but I think between that offensive line, Zeke Elliott running the football, and then you talk about Cooper, Gallup, and CeeDee Lamb to go along with a good young tight end and Blake Jarwin. 
you go, holy cow, you know, the Cowboys, they might play through their offense a little bit more than we've seen in years past. Yeah, the defense is good, but I think they'll be able to push the envelope on people with their offensive scheme and talent to where they're going to really be able to put pressure on team that way too. Yeah, I agree with you there. And C.D. Lamb, so far, the returns have been spectacular. Uh, the things that he will be able to bring to that offense. And, you know, Chris, we talk so much about Ezekiel Elliott, and he's been, as Stephen Jones said last year, the straw that stirs the drink. Well, the real straw is the quarterback. And Dak Prescott, for all the great things he's done, the wins haven't been there. We talked yesterday about how a quarterback can influence winning a Patrick Mahomes, his attitude, the term that Eric Bieniemy used to describe his motivation, yeah. his 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 effort to hold himself and others accountable. What's the next level for Dak Prescott to take that performance, which if anything has been underrated and translate it into more success on the field, winning the games that count the most, getting to the playoffs and piling up the victories when they get there. Well, you know, again, yeah, there's some big games and big moments where you'd like to see, oh, okay, yeah, Dak Prescott, get on my back. I'll carry you through these big moments and everything like that. Hey, yes, yeah, certainly. And, but, I mean, I think we're being picky, you know, when, when we say that. You know, this is still a guy that's, what, never had a losing season as a starting quarterback. And I really look at some of the issues that he's had and the offensive side has had. It's not really his issues. I looked at them as offensive issues. You know, even again at the end of the year last year, you know, we started to stall in the Philadelphia game. That's where I'll remember. It went back to we're going to line up in the same formation and never have any motion. And I don't really know what the game plan is or what the game, you know, the plan of attack is on the offensive side of the ball. You know, that it's not easy to play quarterback that way. Just being all over the place? I mean, do you think Drew Brees or Tom Brady in New England in all those years just were like, hey, just call plays and we'll figure it out? No, McDaniel, Sean Payton, they tell them the logic behind the plays and how they're going to tie things together because it makes sense to do it this way during the week. And I don't know, you know, but by what I see in film, I don't think he's had the benefit of the doubt that way. So I think that's where it's going to be refreshing this year for Dak Prescott. And I would be shocked if the play is not better. Uh, I, I really I would be truly shocked just because of the talent. I think the guy's a hard worker and is going to get better. It's such a basic concept that, you know, if you come out in the same alignment for every play, the defense is not going to be all that confused no. about what you're ultimately going to do. Now, everything you do flows from that same alignment, so I guess the defense doesn't know what's coming because they line up the same way every way. But But once you start moving guys around – and doing all sorts of shifting and motion and, and that puts stress on the brains of the defensive players cuz you know about. maybe it's something they've never seen before they've studied the film now what the hell are these guys doing and there's all these distractions and and uh, and we don't know where to go and where do we go here and who has this guy and exactly. what you know and and it can overwhelm a defense mentally so why it's amazing they haven't done it and I, I sense that you firmly believe that that's one of the big changes we're going to see this year. I, I do, yeah. I just think Mike McCarthy is going to be able to evaluate his football team the right way and realize, ooh, wait, we do this really well. You know, we're really strong at these positions. And he's going to come up with game plans that are going to tie it all together and make sense. You know, that, that to me will be the big deal. And, you know, I love the Kellen Moore that he kept him on staff too because you've heard me complain. Mike McCarthy, yeah, he's really good at – kind of figuring out the right way to attack and do those things and have a cohesive game plan. But sometimes, to me, it's lacked a little imagination, too, as you've heard me say in years past, where I want to go, yeah, I understand Green Bay's approach, but this is like the first, you know, this is this is a play from the second day of training camp, and they're running it too much, and I don't care if the approach is right or not. That's going to be – the defense is going to catch on to that. You know, I think Kellen Moore is going to add more to that offense, and I heard Mike McCarthy in his press conference say he went back to the drawing board to look at more stuff offensively to implement in his scheme and those things. So, yeah, that's where I'm excited about it. And, you know, when you look at it there on paper with the Dallas Cowboys, I mean, of course, on paper, they're the best team in the NFC East. But – I don't know. Can they get out of their own way? Can they put it all together here? Can they beat the Philadelphia Eagles? So I look at the team they're going to have to compete with in that division to say we're the king of, of the NFC East. I don't know. Yeah, it seems it seems like every year the Cowboys are the best team on paper in the yeah. NFC East, if not in the NFC, but something happens along the way. What happened last year was the Ezekiel Elliott holdout, and when he returned, he wasn't quite the same guy. 
presumably because he missed all that time in training camp. He didn't have the same burst, Chris, as you pointed out. He'd get out into the open field, and he wouldn't take it the distance or continue. He'd get caught up with from behind right. and brought down. Ezekiel Elliott salty about last year, about the criticism, even though he had a big season. Here he is talking about what he's trying to prove in 2020. Yeah, I think I do have a lot to prove. Uh, you know, I just have high expectations of myself. And, um, I mean, you can, it's not something you can go and force. You just got to, you know, grind, go to work every day, and, uh, and let it happen. Are they going to get themselves into a we only have one football problem with three receivers, one of whom Amari Cooper openly talking about all three of them having more than 1,000 yards receiving this year. Ezekiel Elliott's going to want his opportunities to prove himself. Is it going to be an awkward balance between the running game and the passing game when you have one of the best running backs and now you're going to have one of the best passing attacks? No, I, I think they'll be okay. I, I do. I mean, you know, again, is somebody at the end of the year maybe going to be a little disappointed at the receiver position and go, man, I wish I could have had a few more receptions, stuff like that. Yeah, but again, these are, you know, first-class problems here. Uh, you know, and, and you look at any great offense, they usually have, and not including the quarterback, three weapons on the offensive side of the ball that make a defense go, oh, man. I mean, great offenses usually have that to where it's like, oh, I don't know what to do here. Wait, it's Michael Thomas, it's Alvin Kamara, and it's Jared Cook. Who do I cover? You know, you know, you know, so you go through great offenses. A lot of the times they had that, you know, like go back to New England in the days with Gronkowski and Wes Welker and Edelman. And you're just like, whoa, OK, who, which one do we double? What do we do here? No, but it's going to be on Kellen Moore and Mike McCarthy to make sure that they make these receivers, especially feel included. You know, you can find cheap ways to get them included, too, whether that's, you know, those speed sweeps, reverses, screens to the receivers. Those are cheap ways to run the football without really running the football and putting the wear and tear on Ezekiel Elliott. You know, those things will make guys feel included, even though the receptions and things won't go their way either. And then, of course, just success of your offense is going to quiet things down in a hurry, too, when guys start to see, wow, we're, we're wide open, we're getting catches, we're moving the ball, this is fun, it's just great to be a part of. That's what they got to strive to be, and then they'll have no issues. We mentioned the arrival of Everson Griffin, who will be the bookend to Demarcus Lawrence in that pass rush, but Gerald McCoy, one of the interior defensive linemen acquired this offseason along with Ontario Poe, Gerald McCoy out for the year with a ruptured quad that happened yesterday. Another example of how lightning cannon will strike at these various NFL training camps. How big of a deal is it to not have Gerald McCoy, a guy who had never played for the team before? Well, I mean, it, it hurts because of that Mike Nolan scheme. It is going to be more multiple. It's going to be 3-4 four and 4-3, four, everything together. You know, the Dallas, the, the one thing or the one reason they can survive it is – they just have an unbelievable amount of D tackles and defensive ends on their roster to begin with, let alone a third rounder in Oklahoma out of Oklahoma, Neville Gallimore, who I thought was just phenomenal, like a top 40 pick type talent, I thought, coming out in the draft. So I don't think this is a killer to them. You know, when you look at Antoine Wood still there, Tristan Hill still there. You know, Neville Gallimore, the, the Alden Smiths, you know, Tyrone Crawford, he should be back in the swing of things there. I think they can survive it without Gerald McCoy. It's going to hurt. It stinks. Those are really their issues. You know, if you look at the everything, you go interior D-line, and then they got to figure out interior O-line, right? The center guard combination of Joe Looney, Connor McGovern, and Connor Williams. Who's going to be the starters there? How do they get the best five on the field? But to me, those are the pressing issues more than anything, that interior D-line, interior O-line to get figured out for a great roster. All right, best case, worst case for the 2020 Cowboys, Chris. Best case? I mean, number one, they're, they're, to me, they're capable of being the number one team and being 13-3 and three in the NFC. I, I, I have no doubt about it. I think Mike McCarthy and the new coaching staff are going to be worth at least one or two wins just with the new energy and the new focus in the building. So I say that's the best case, 13-3, and 14-2. and two. Yeah, I think they're capable of doing that. I mean, it wasn't that long ago they did it. So I look at that. Worst case, like, like we saw last year. I don't think it can be much worse than that. Nine and seven, just miss out. Eight and eight, just miss out. Something like that. Yeah, best case for me is the one seed and maybe a postseason run that includes, oh, I don't know, a date with Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Wouldn't oh, that be a great that would be amazing for Rodgers and Mike McCarthy? And 
And an old school Cowboys 49ers NFC championship. Oh, game. yeah. I mean, it looks like the 49ers are headed there anyway, so they may as well play the Cowboys there if the Cowboys can make it back for the first time since the days when it was Cowboys 49ers every damn year in the NFC championship game. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.